I am going to teach you simplex method. By default, simplex method is to solve a maximize problem. Now let us take this sum with three variables. Maximize z is equal to 15x1 plus 10x2 plus 5x3. This is the objective function. And for this, we have the constraints. The first constraint is 6x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 less than or equal to 90 and the second constraint is 3x1 plus 5x2 plus 6x3 less than or equal to 60. As usual the non-negativity x1, x2 and x3 should always be greater or equal to 0. So now I am going to teach you simplex method. This problem cannot be solved using graphical method because there are three basic variables. So in case you have 3 or any number of variables above 3, you can choose simplex method to solve it. The first step in the simplex method is called as initial basic feasible solution. Initial basic feasible solution. In short, we can call this as IBFS. The sum originally has three variables x1, x2 and x3. This is referred as the basic variables. So in the simplex method, along with the basic variables, we will be adding few more variables. The variables what we add to solve the problem is called as non-basic variables. There are several types of non-basic variables. In this problem, we are going to see only one type. So I will refer only one type as of now. When we go further into this, I will teach you the other variables also, other non-basic uh, non variables also. Here, the one non-basic variable what I am going to teach you is called as slack variable. Slack is leftover or which is unused. So let us take the first constraint because here I have given a plus I am going to add the slack variable this is purely based on the constraints so if I take the constraints subject to constraints 6x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 we have less than or equal to 90 now do not fill in any sign. Now let us assume the left hand side which has three variables are going to uh, like uh, x1, x2, x3 if we assign any value to the variable and if you get the sum product of that it should never exceed 90 which means it can be any number but it should not go beyond 90. In case this total works out to 80, we are running 10 short. In other words, we are unusing 10 units of from this 90. In case this total is 85, we are not using 5 units of this 90. So how many ever units we are not going to use, we can call it as leftover. That leftover is referred as slack. So what I will do, I will add that into the left hand side. That is the leftovers, the slack, which is represented by the character S. As I am writing S for the first time, I will write S1. As a result, the right hand side, will all, the left hand side will always be equal to the right hand side. Whatever leftover we have will automatically be assigned to S1. In case the total of this is x1, x2, x3, this is 80, S1 will be 10. If this is 85, S1 will be 5. If it is 89, S1 will be 9, 1, sorry. If this total is 90, S1 will be 0. As a result, what happens is the left hand side and the right hand side is always equal. Hence, we remove the lesser than sign and replace it only with the equality sign. Similarly, repeat the process for the second equation which is 3x1 plus 5x2 plus 6x3 plus 
Now whatever is left out we call it as S2 which is equal to 60. Now we have brought in two variables which is slack variables which are otherwise called as non-basic variables. You should take these non-basic variables here to the objective function. And when I take this S1 here, I am not. we are not going to sell it because all these are profits. When you sell X1 number of units for 1 unit 15 rupees profit, X2 number of units for 1 unit 10 rupees profit, rather S1 we are not going to sell so no profit or no loss. Hence, it has a coefficient of 0. Similarly, for S2 also, the coefficient is 0. Then, to the last step, non-negativity. Non-negativity, we should take from the objective function. With whatever variables we have, all these variables should always return a value of 0 or greater than 0 and never it can be negative. That means x1, comma x2, comma x3, comma s1, comma s2 all should be greater or equal to 0. With this, we have done the initial basic feasible solution. With help of this initial basic feasible solution, I am going to prepare the simplex table. These values will be entered into the table. So let us see how to enter these values into the simplex table. First, draw a simplex table. Every simplex table will have the CJ on top of the table and compulsorily it will have three columns that is C bar, basis and X0 x naught is the right hand side constant that is the 90 and the 60 we had in the constraint equation that is called as x naught after this go to the objective function from the initial basic feasible solution whatever variables we have open a column for each of the variables which means x1 x2 x3 s1 s2 which means five columns five columns which is x1 x2, x3, s1, s2. Please leave a column blank in the end. We may need it later. So this is a simplex tables format. Here I am going to fill in the values. First let us take the objective function. Maximize z is equal to 15x1 plus 10x2 plus 5x3 you can read that over here as the CJ and fill the values appropriately. 15x1 plus 10x2 plus 5x3 plus 0s1 plus 0s2. I will repeat 15x1 plus 10x2 plus 5x3 plus 0s1 plus 0s2. So right on top. 15x1 plus 10x2 plus 5x3 plus 0s1 plus 0s2. The objective function is done. Now we will go into the table. When you fill into the table, we are going to fill only the constraints. So when you come to the constraints, there are two constraints and, for, and in both the constraints, we have the slack variables. So always write in the basis to start with the slack variables, which is S1 and S2. S1 for the first constraint, S2 for the second constraint. The CJ and C bar both are same. That means for S1, the CJ value for S1 is 0, which means C bar is also same, which is 0. And the CJ value for S2 is 0, so for S2, C bar is also 0. CJ equal to C bar, CJ equal to C bar, so 0, 0, 0, 0. And then the x0 is the right hand side constant. For the first constraint, the right hand side constant is 90 and for the second it is 60. So come over here, 90 and 60. Now we should fill in the constraints based on the variables coefficient. 6x1, 2x2, this is the first constraint. 6x1, 
plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus 1s1. Similarly, go to the second one. 3x1, 5x2, 6x3 plus 1s2. Which means in the first constraint s2 is not there, so it is a 0. In the second constraint s1 is not there, so it is 0. Once we have entered this, the initial basic feasible solution is entered into the table. Now we can start solving the simplex table. The first step in solving the simplex table is calculating zj. For zj, you should calculate the value for each of the column. How to calculate? Take the, for x0 I am going to calculate now, x0 value is 90. 90 into c bar and the 60 into c bar which is 90 into 0, 60 into 0 add both the answers values and write here which means 0 19 to 0 is 0, 16 to 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0 similarly 6 into 0 is 0, 3 into 0 is 0 add both which is 0 2 into 0 is 0, 5 into 0 is 0 j you should find for every column Zj is like a very simple step. Multiply the corresponding column value with the c bar. 90 into 0, then 60 into 0. Add both the values, you will get 0. Okay, write 0 here. Similarly, 6 into 0, 0. 3 into 0, 0. If you add both, it is 0. 2 into 0, 0. 5 into 0, 0. Add both 0, which means to start with Zj, we will have zeros. Now you should find zj minus cj. 0 zj is here, cj is here. 0 minus nothing, 0. 0 minus 15 is minus 15. 0 minus 10 is minus 10. 0 minus 5 is minus 5. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. The ZJ minus CJ, the ZJ minus CJ is our answer. In case the ZJ minus CJ return with positive or zeros, the optimality is arrived. But in any simplex problem, the first step you will never get the optimality because the zj values are 0 so 0 minus the cj values you will have all negatives so you will your chances of getting positive is 0% so we can clearly see the optimality is not a right if optimality is not a right what should we do we should I trade the simplex table until you get positives or zeros in the zj minus cj row. So I am going to teach you the process of the first iteration.